Hello and welcome to Not Just Books, the library's monthly show about what's going on in your community and at the library. And I'm Dolores Greenwald. I'm the executive director of the Williamson County Public Library. Today we have some very special guests. We have Mindy Tate, who is the executive director of the very busy, very important nonprofit organization, Franklin Tomorrow. It's going to be talking about a brand new initiative called On the Table. And also we have with us Lindsay Roseberry. She is one of our wonderful reference librarians at uh, the main library here on Columbia Avenue. She's going to be talking about all kind of new books that's coming out for this fall. So sit back, relax, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. I am so pleased to have as one of our guests today, Executive Director of the very busy, very important organization, Franklin Tomorrow. Mindy Tate is here with us. Thanks for having me, Dolores. And there is a lot of things to talk about with uh, Franklin Tomorrow and what Franklin Tomorrow does that we could fill up a <laughs> long, you know, we could fill up a movie time. But what I want to focus on today, Mindy, is your program for On the Table. So tell us a little bit what that's about. Well, On the Table is uh, going to be centered around the date of October 30th, Tuesday, October 30th. Franklin Morrow is an almost 20-year-old community visioning and engagement organization. And in the past, we've done visioning using dots where people could go to different locations and place a dot next to mm -hmm. a goal or strategy for our community that mm -hmm. they felt was important. On the Table is a new way of doing this, as well as hearing from people what they hope for the future of our community. It will also allow us to engage people in conversation, hopefully with people they know, but also with people that they're meeting for the first time to talk about what's important in our community and how we can make it an even greater community. And the, the real kickoff for this is Breakfast with the Mayors. Right. Breakfast with the Mayors is one of our events, and you're on our board and are really gracious to be on that committee as well as a couple others. But Breakfast with the Mayors is quarterly, and it's held at Rolling Hills Community Church. And the next event is October 30th at Rolling Hills. It will start at 7 a.m., and we are so fortunate that Puckett's Grocery and Restaurant does our breakfast and they'll be providing breakfast. But if you've ever been to Breakfast with the Mayors before, that's normally theater seating. But mm -hmm. on October 30th, we'll be seated at table rounds where people can have these conversations led by table hosts. And we anticipate that our normal attendance of 350 to 400 people will swell to 500 people. But it's free. All of our conversations are free, and we hope that people will join us uh, either at Breakfast with the Mayors or at one of the other public events. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, who is who would need to be there? Well, every citizen needs to be there. We hope to engage in, through On the Table citizens who are new to our community or may not feel that they've had a voice in this process. The great thing about an event like On the Table is when you introduce food into a meeting, it becomes a gathering. Mm -hmm. And so we hope that it will make people more comfortable to come together and share and meet someone new. We're patterning our program after, this has been done in communities across the country. It started with the Chicago Community Trust, but we're patterning our program and being mentored by the folks in Lexington, Kentucky at the Bluegrass Community Foundation. And some of us were lucky enough to go up and participate in their second on the table experience in March of this year and we learned a lot but what we learned most is that food is a great equalizer and it brings people together and it's a great way to, to talk. Uh, we'll even let you talk with your mouth full if you have a thought <laughs> so you know you have to do that. And how can people be involved? You can host or any, uh, attend an on-the-table conversation. Right. There is a lot of information on our website, franklintomorrow.org backslash on the table. 
And on that page, you'll find updated information about what it means to be a host or how to join the conversation. And then also links to click on if you want to host an event in your home or in your office, and those would be private events that you would determine the guest list. Or if you want to join the conversation, you can click on a link there also to join right now the conversation for Breakfast with the Mayors. We'll be rolling out more information about public events throughout the community on October 30th and the 72 hours around that uh, after October 1st. And hosting or attending an event is, is not a huge commitment. It's, so talk a little bit about that. A host is really a table leader. We're not expecting that that host is going to sit there and take down every word that is going to be said at their table. We're going to provide training um, at several different times during the month of October, easy training, as well as conversation starters and a host guide for that day. The most important thing that a host will do during their on the table experience is make sure that everyone has a chance to be involved in the conversation. And secondly, they will make sure that they secure the participant's email address because how we will use this information moving forward is we will send a, an online survey link to everyone who participates in a public or private conversation where we have their email address mm -hmm. to complete that survey. And then we'll be releasing those results in probably January in conjunction with the city of Franklin and the results of their national citizen survey they'll be conducting to shape our work for 2019 as well as to inform elected officials what the citizens are truly feeling about what's good in our community, what can be better, and what the citizens can do to be involved in making it better. And if you have a, a topic that is very important to you, you're passionate about, and you would and, and you think Franklin would be a much improved city, city if we did such and such. This is your way to bring forth that information. It certainly is. And what's important is that you may want to participate in a public conversation like Breakfast with the Mayors and bring that to the forefront of the eight to ten people sitting at your table. But you may also want to host a private event that brings together people who share your interest or passion and they can participate, then they will get the survey and that will enhance the ability of this to be a topic. One of the things that Franklin <coughs> Tomorrow has been working on in the last few years is connectivity. Definitely sidewalks, trails, and greenways. That's what the citizens told us in our last visioning process and we anticipate that more connectivity will be requested even though we've seen great sidewalk projects completed recently along Highway 96 East and Highway 96 West. But we've also been looking at the feasibility of an inclusive playground for our community. And we know that those uh, communities or divisions of our community that work with those with special needs are very interested in that, and the city is as well. But we can provide uh, support for those projects by bringing those topics forward and with the citizens' support. And it, it takes a person to spearhead that and to to lead a discussion that's very passionate about. Right, and so if you're gonna host a private conversation that is a directed conversation about a specific topic, that's great. But we'd also encourage you and those others who are passionate about it to participate in a public conversation mm -hmm. because we're gonna have people from different sectors of our community who have different priorities, but we all need to be listening to each other one of the great things we heard from Lexington was that 70% of the people who participated in On the Table and responded to the survey said they met someone new. In a That's community good. growing as rapidly as Franklin and Williamson County, being able to meet new people, being able to get involved and get engaged in our community really is an opportunity like this doesn't come along because it will be people from throughout the community in different uh, locations as well as uh, public locations and, and so it's going to be a great opportunity. And you know to I could almost guarantee you're going to find someone if you participate in this you're going to find someone that's that is passionate about what you're passionate about and wants to see uh, 
you know, ways to make Franklin even a better place than it already is. For Franklin Tomorrow, one of the reasons to do this is our mission is to engage the community, foster collaboration, and then advocate for a shared vision for the future of Franklin. And in our last visioning, the citizens, though, and we define that as those who live, work, and play here, told us that they want Franklin to be a community with a robust economy, vibrant neighborhoods, distinct character, and great people. And from there, we talked with individual groups and other sectors to determine task forces and work projects we would undertake. And from this experience with On the Table, we anticipate that this will shape our work into 2019 and, and beyond and help us determine speakers for programs like Breakfast with the Mayors, um, our monthly Frank Talks lecture series, and also shape where we might look for examples of good city leadership in a growing economy and a growing city like Franklin. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things we've done in the past is we've taken our Vision City visit and gone to communities across the United States that are experiencing growth similar to Franklin. And we are happy to share this idea of on the table with those communities and others, even across Williamson County. It would be great if other communities in Williamson County undertook this, say, in 2019 or 2020. I think this is a, a fabulous way to be involved in the community and to uh, have your voice heard, as we say when we talk about on the table. Tell us a bit about the survey and what does Franklin Tomorrow hope to accomplish after this survey? What do you want to do with this information you're going to gather? As I said, we will, are working to develop the survey right now and are identifying a research partner, university research partner to work with. We hope to release the initial report of the outcomes of the survey in January to both the public as well as city officials. We, uh, the, it will ask what, ha what was discussed at your table but the survey will also ask the citizen what is the most important uh, topic of interest to you. Would you be willing to become involved? Mm -hmm. Perhaps ask them do they vote because we have a problem with voter turnout in local elections and we'd like to encourage people to be, stay engaged past on the table. And we certainly will communicate that to those people who participate in on the table. I also think city uh, and county administrators and leaders are going to be very interested in what uh, comes as a result of this, I think. As you mentioned when you introduced me, Franklin Tomorrow is an established and very busy organization in our community, but we're growing so rapidly that we have the opportunity to introduce people to our community and to our organization. Breakfast with the Mayors draws regularly 350 to 400 people, but we anticipate this will be an even larger event and will be a great way for people to become involved in our organization, whether it's just by attending Breakfast with the Mayors or looking at some of the other events we do, like Frank Talks on a monthly basis. And Mindy, give us a website one more time as we go to another topic. Franklin Tomorrow, it's, so our website is franklintomorrow.org backslash on the table for on the table information, or you can sign up through that website also to get our monthly and or bi-monthly updates of events and activities going on in the community. But franklintomorrow.org and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We're all over social media. Thank you so much for coming and talking about Franklin Tomorrow and On the Table. Glad to be here. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. I am so pleased to have almost one of our regulars with us, <laughs> Lindsay Roseberry. She works in our hardworking, awesome reference department at the main library. And part of what Lindsay does, which is quite a bit, has to do with keeping up with titles of fiction and nonfiction books that are coming out. So I've asked her to come and talk about that with us today. Welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. Thanks Thank you so me. much for coming today. The, uh, the fall season is a big time for books. 
So summer as well, but tell us a little bit about the books that are coming out this fall. Well, of course, Fear um, the came out. It's it just came out Monday, mm -hmm. and that was well anticipated. Um, which side you're on, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so um, so. Un Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver. Well, wait a minute okay. before you move. Tell uh -huh. us a little bit about Fear. By It's by Bob Woodward. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Bob Woodward, um, who is a legendary reporter for the Washington Post. And he was the one who um, uh, who, who co-wrote uh, the water uh, about um, the Watergate. Um, all the President's Men. All the President's Men, yes. And, um, and so he's been commenting and writing about Presidents a long time. And... He has interviewed many people in the Trump administration and has um, written a, an interesting um, view of what goes on. Yes. Barbara Kingsolver, she's got a new book for those people who like her. It's called Unsheltered. Um, there's another book. Uh, it's the sequel to Essex Serpent. I okay. don't know if you remember hearing about that one. Um, it's called Melmoth. Okay. And now, it, tell us a little bit about the about the series. Well, the Essex Serpent is uh, a may or may not be a, a kind of a Loch Ness monster in, in a in a lake in in England. Cool. And it's whether it exists or not. It's uh, it's kind of like a dark Gothic mystery novel. <laughs> so um, you can put all those together. <laughs> Um, let's see. And then another one that's going to be big around here probably is A Well-Behaved Woman, a novel of the Vanderbilts. Oh, tell us a little bit about that. Who's the author this, of that um, Teresa or Therese Ann Fowler. She follows Alva Vanderbilt and her family as they, mm -hmm. as they preside over the Gilded Age in New York. Vanderbilts is a fascinating family mm -hmm. anyway. And they're spread out too. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Connolly has a new book for ah. Mysteries. It's called Dark Sacred Night. Now, he's got a main character in most of his books, right? Harry Bosch. Yes. Yes. Is it a Bosch? It a is Bosch a Bosch book, book. as I would call it's it. It's a Bosch book. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I love that character. And also, the, there's, a, there's a series yes, now. I've seen the first couple. On They're Amazon that's pretty well done. Um, there's a new Robert Galbraith book out called Lethal, Lethal White. Hmm. And that, of course, is Cormoran Strike. Mm -hmm. um, the the PI and his able assistant Robin, yeah. and um, that's the one that was scooped because J. A. K. Rowling is writing these books as Go as Robert Galbraith. Oh, oh, that's right. I knew that name sounded familiar. And she's very good, but yeah. it is not anything like Harry Potter. <laughs> well, she's done a couple of things since Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. That's not. That's and I understand different. there's also a series on either BBC or BBC America or somewhere mm -hmm. based on this as well. Mm -hmm. um, for those people who like Charlene Harris, she's got a new book. It is an alternative history novel, so it's not oh. following Suki, Sack, Suki Stackhouse. Um, set Which in is a, True Blood yeah, for right, people. Yeah, right. Um, and, and this is set in the broken up United States after Franklin Roosevelt was assassinated. Ooh. Now, is that out yet, or is it coming out? This is coming out. Um, let's see. It says in October. Okay. Alternative history is an interesting topic. Right. Quite a few uh, books on that subject. There's one, what is it, The high, Man in the... T Man in the High Castle. And the High Castle, which That's would, a, what if not the Nazis mm -hmm. had won That's an old World book, War II. but somebody finally decided to make a series out of it. Yeah, very interesting. I've not seen it. But um, I'm, I, that's on my list. I have many things on my list. Yeah, it's, it's, I saw <laughs> just a couple of episodes. It was pretty good. Okay, so tell us what else. Um, is Ursula K. Le Guin has got a new book of poetry coming out, ah. which um, she passed away. Uh, and she was a wonderful science fiction writer, but she okay. also does many things. So. Okay. Um, so there are memoirs coming up. Becoming by Michelle Obama. Okay, now is that a memoir or a it's biography? It's a memoir biography. She tells of growing up in Chicago's South Side and, mm -hmm. and what it means to be the, fir the first African-American first lady. Now when is that? Coming? That's coming out in November. Yeah, that'll get a lot of attention yeah. when it comes out. And In Pieces, which is out now by Sally Field. Oh, 
Is that a bio? That's a, a biography, biography too. Mm -hmm. She talks. Uh, yes, I think this is the first one she's written, and she also talks about Burt Reynolds. Ah, who recently passed, who recently away. passed away? Yes, yes. And there's a book called Small Fry by Lisa Brennan Jobs, who uh, is the daughter of Steve Jobs. And she oh. talks about growing up in the Jobs household. Yes, I've heard of that book. And the, his wife has really not liked it too much mm. because she has some very kind of unfriendly, unkind things to say about it. Well, I think Steve Jobs was a brilliant man, but I don't know how easy it would have been to grow up well, as, his, in his household. Well, Walter Isaacson's book mm -hmm. on Steve Jobs I thought was, was really Excellent. And Steve Jobs came to him before he passed away mm -hmm. and said, I would like for you to tell my story and put warts and all in it. Mm -hmm. And evidently it sounds like that's kind of what his daughter has done too. Right. Yeah. So She would have a different viewpoint from Mr. Yeah. Isaacson yeah. being there. Yeah. Um, there's another book that sounds interesting to me called Mad, Bad, Dangerous to Know, the fathers of Wild Yates and Joyce. That's um, an, so it's that's profiling an the fathers title. of those people. <laughs> yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, <laughs> also, going on to history, the Browns of California, the family dynasty that transformed a state and shaped a nation. Now is this this Jerry is Jerry Brown's Brown and his family? father. Mm -hmm. Okay. His father, Pat, and, and Jerry. Now his father was was his father also governor? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. okay. They've collectively governed California for 24 of the last 60 years. Wow. So, um, Interesting. Burning Down the House, H-A-U-S, Punk Rock Revolution and the Fall of the Berlin Wall. Wow. That's interesting. So the role of punk music and how it yes. brought about the fall of the Berlin War. Yes. Wall. Interesting. Uh, Jill Lepore has a new book called These Truths, A History of the United States. Um, and she goes, she considers America starting in 1492 mm -hmm. through the lens of its ideals, its ideas, and um, the understandings of historical truth, hmm. which sounds intriguing. Now, do, for you those know, people. do you know what her background is? She um, is, worked at Harvard, okay. maybe taught at Harvard, okay. and also writes for the New Yorker. Okay. Um, and oh, with what, politics and current events. On the other side of freedom, the case for hope, and he is a Black Lives Matter activist, a formal school official, and co-founder of Campaign Zero, and mm -hmm. he's talking about oppression and injustice and laying out a framework that would hopefully bring around change. Okay. And then 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. This one I have some other information okay. about. Um, he talks about the different things that we can do and how the world is changing Okay, now who's the author? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Yuval Noah Harari. Oh, okay. Um, it's a collection of prov provocative essays. Uh huh. What's happening in the world today, and what is the deep meaning of these events? Okay. And he wants to see. He's seeing how this century will develop in, um, ever more sophisticated algorithms that will change oh, the way goodness. we work. And he also thinks that we should work with critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and crea creativity. Those are the four oh. C's he wants to talk about. Well, that kind of ties into our, our other segment with mm -hmm. collaboration with Franklin tomorrow almost. Right. Um, there's three music biographies. Okay. Out. One called Thanks a Lot, Mr. Kibblewhite, <laughs> My Story by Roger Daltrey. It's coming out in October. Uh huh. Um, Let's go so we can get back by Jeff Tweedy. Now the uh -huh. back at the Roger Daltrey. He must have been a te an, an, a teacher of Daltrey's. Or I, something. I would have, I imagine so. Um, yeah. It doesn't say that, but uh, and for it all say of who the children out in the audience, Roger Daltrey yeah. is with the, with he's the who, with the, who. <laughs> the lead singer of the Who. Um, well, thank you for yes, because some people don't know who that is. Um, Jeff Tweedy, who. Um, was with Wilco and Uncle Tupelo. Okay. He writes about growing up. Mm -hmm. And then Acid for the Children, a memoir by Flea, who is a bassist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, okay. Which ought to be interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, there's a new book also called Accessory to War, The Unspoken Alliance Between Astrophysics and the Military by Neil De Neil deGrasse Tyson. I had a feeling that was going to, when you started the title, I had a feeling that was him. Yes. Because he's had a very popular book on the New York Times list for Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Yes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember the exact title, but I, I yes. I think that's it. And then he did the uh, Cos the updated Cosmos mm -hmm. series, which brilliant was man. excellent. But oh, he yeah. also has a great sense of humor. I've seen him on several game shows as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, Reader Come Home, The Reading Brain in a Digital World, which Ooh, examines the effect of digital technologies on how humans process the language, focusing on how parents and educators can ensure children retain the benefits of reading. That's interesting. And the Dalai Lama has a new book out called The, the Call to Revolution. Now, when um, is that one coming out? That's in November. November, okay. Uh, he's laying out his vision for the future. The and Dalai Lama books are you when he's done a couple of other ones that's been very popular. And then God is Young by Pope Francis. He speaks uh, directly towards the millennials in this call for greater youth engagement in the politics of the world. I like that. That's interesting. That's and then interesting. With also with God, God and the Quran by Jack Miles. Um, he looks at the God of Islam creating mm -hmm. a character study similar to those he did on Christ and Yahweh. Very interesting. Um, and one more. Oh, one more? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, Jody Picot. Um, oh, like I'll just her. mention a couple of people. Um, Leanne, Leanne, Leanne Moriarty and Louise Penny. I'll have books coming up. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay, for coming. As you can tell, <laughs> that there is that it's quite a task keeping up with the books that are that are coming out, among yes. other things that you do. So we appreciate it. And if people want to find out more about the library, mm -hmm. they can go to our website. WCPLTN.org. And also, you can always call the reference desk at 615-595-1243. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank you. And we'll be right back. When I lost my sight, the only thing I had was reading. When you discover you have an impairment, it can change your life. So take a little time to find the resources that are going to help you restore what you've lost. Whatever your needs are, 99.9% .9 of them can be met by the NLS program. There's all kinds of formats that you can choose from. You can choose from large print or braille or audio. Just can't recommend it enough. It's a free service. It's amazing how much you can get. It has expanded my horizon. And everybody can read the way they want to read using this program. For more information about the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, Library of Congress, visit loc.gov slash thatallmayread or call 1-888-NLS-READ. Thank you for joining us today. And I would like to thank my special guests, Mindy Tate and Lindsay Roseberry. Mindy Tate is the Executive Director of Franklin Tomorrow, and she discussed uh, the On the Table initiative by Franklin Tomorrow. Also, Lindsay Roseberry, reference librarian with the Williamson County Public Library and talked about new books that are coming out this fall. So please let us know what you think about our library and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at facebook.com slash WCPLTN and on twitter.com slash WCPLTN. You can always visit our website and leave comments there at wcpltn.org. And until next time, explore your world and read. Mm -hmm.